Mortgages for Business latest vlog. My name is Gavin Richardson and I'm Head of Sales here at Mortgages for Business and I'm here with Charlie London, our Specialist Buy to Let Broker. Today we're going to discuss the uh, pros and cons and give you some information hopefully on purchasing and borrowing within an SPV. Now an SPV is a special purchase vehicle. So Charlie, can you put a little bit more context around what actually is an SPV? Yes, certainly, Gavin. Um, an SPV, or Special Purpose Vehicle, as you rightly said, is a limited company set up for the sole purpose of owning and renting property um, within the UK. Okay. So what's the main differences between an SPV and a normal trading limited company? So in real simple terms, is an, an SPV only activity is to own and rent or sell UK property. Therefore, it won't have wages, turnover, um, like a standard trading company, so that's its sole purpose. Okay. And from a lender's perspective, what would they kind of look for in terms of an application in a, in a limited company or an application in an SPV? Um, so generally there are lenders out there that will take both. Um, you've got lenders that would look at an, an SPV, a newly formed SPV, so from you can set it up this morning and you can apply for a mortgage this afternoon or you've got the trading limited company. So let's say you're an IT consultant and you want to add a property into that consultancy business. That undertakes a bit more um, underwriting. Uh, they're going to be looking at two years accounts, etc., things, bits and pieces like that. But if you're looking just for an SPV, you can set it up today and move forward from there. Okay. So why would our clients think about purchasing through an SPV compared uh, to in a personal name or in any other entity really? Yeah, so we get this question um, a lot and essentially um, I would say we're, we're mortgage experts so our, our advice is going to be based on giving you the right mortgage product. What I would say is speak to a tax specialist or an accountant in the first instance to see if that is actually the right route to go down for yourself and then after that we can give you the, um, the basics on what the best mortgage product is for, for yourself. Okay, so realistically, take the specialist advice, make yep. sure it's right for you, everyone's circumstances are very different. Once that advice has been gathered, then we can support actually the right route to, to set up. Yeah, okay. because it might not be the right time for the moment, or it might be, and then we can we can help you with a personal or via a limited company as well. Okay, and we get asked quite regularly, how do I actually set up an SPV? So, is it complicated, simple, what's the process? Um, it's, it's generally fairly simple. Um, you go onto a company's house website, you can set it up within about 15 minutes on there. The feedback I get from a lot of my customers is the hardest thing is, is determining the name of the company. Right. Um, if you do go online, there are lots of websites on there that say they will help set it up for you. But if I'm brutally honest, it's probably just a waste of money. You can go online and set it up yourself and go through the government website. Okay. And one of the important things is actually getting the right industry code, SIC code as yep. it's called. So customers need to get that right, otherwise lenders will look at it very differently. So what, what SIC code should we be using? Yeah, so SIC code is standard, standard industrial class or standard industrial classification, um, which is easy for me to say, and they basically say what the company's going to trade on. The two main ones that the lenders use are 68209 and 68100. If you add either of those two or both of them on there, then all um, limited company lenders will be happy to accept those. Easy. Thank you, Charlie. Okay, and we get another question regularly in terms of you know, advice that they may be received from the high street in terms of how much can I borrow through my limited company? Um, you know, is it more or less, or how does it work? So generally speaking, if you're looking at a five-year fixed rate via a limited company, you can borrow more than in personal names. For example, I run a, a quick look before I come in here earlier on a property valued at 200,000 with rental of 750, um, and you would struggle to get to 75% on a personal name. Um, but if you go via a limited company, um, we could quite easily get there to that to that level. And the rent required was circa 400, and you're getting 750. So therefore, you can see that you can borrow more via a limited company. Okay, and lenders are more kind of not relaxed in terms of limited company lending, but uh, the stress test works differently because they understand that the tax situation is different in the background. Therefore, you can achieve greater borrowing nine times out of ten. Yeah, nine times out of ten. I mean, via a limited company, the stress testing is virtually uh, is normally 125% uh, pay rate on a five-year fixed rate. So you can be looking at 125 at say 3.5%. Whereas, you know, your vanilla buy to lets it's 145 at five and a half, so therefore you can see where you can achieve the, the higher borrowing level. Okay. And you, and you touched on some rates there. Um, we get it a lot. Oh, I've been told that you shouldn't borrow, borrow in a limited company because the rates are always higher. Is that, is that the case? 
If you're comparing it to your high street banks and your vanilla buy to let, then yes, they are going to be higher. But if you're comparing it to a specialist market and a specialist product, no. We've got products at the moment that are offering cash back, free valuation, low arrangement fees. So actually the, the margin between the two is coming down. With lenders such as the Mortgage Works coming into the limited company space as well, you know, it may come down further. Okay. And just to sort of top and tail that, we're looking at a number of lenders now where there is no difference at all between their personal and limited company rate. I think as more and more lenders come into the market, the competition is higher, therefore you know, rates are almost equalising between personal and limited company. Yeah, most definitely. You're seeing a lot more of the specialist buy-to-let lenders who don't differentiate between a personal and a, a limited company application. Okay. And we touched there really about the size of the market now. I know, I know kind of three years ago there was just over a dozen kind of lenders in the market looking at limited company loans. What, what kind of appetite is there now in the market for lenders supporting our clients? Um, so we've got around 30 different lenders at the moment and there's somewhere in the region of sort of five to 600 products that we've got access to as well. So it's, you know, it's a growing market. Um, we've seen new lenders come on board this, this year and launch. Um, as I said earlier, the mortgage works have come into it, which is you know, one of the, the, the biggest lenders to come into it. So yeah, there is a, a very good mix of products. Okay, so there shouldn't really be any reasons why customers can't actually find a solution, whether it's personal or limited company, in terms of opportunity and availability of product. No, I totally agree with that. I, I think we'd be able to find um, availability for them. Okay, and something else we're seeing quite a lot of at the moment is, you know, some of our more uh, experienced landlords who own properties in a limited company quite some time don't have an issue, but those that have maybe had a port value in their personal names are now looking, you know, following the advice of their accountant to move, okay, their, their properties into a limited company. But that's not quite so simple, is it? No, and this is probably the question we get the, the most frequent is, can I just transfer my personally owned properties into my limited company? Essentially, yes, you can move them into your limited company, but it's treated as a sale and purchase transaction because the legal ownership is changing from Gavin Richardson, let's say, to G. Richardson Property Holdings. Um, you will need to pay stamp duty on there, and there may also be capital gains to, to pay as well. So it is a sale and purchase transaction. Okay. So again, critical they take the professional advice before considering that type of option. Yeah. Okay, so we've covered quite a lot in, in a short period of time there. Thank you very much, Charlie. Really insightful. If you think we can help in any way following today, please do get in touch on 0345 345 6788. Email us at inquiry at mortgagesforbusiness.co.uk or visit our website on www.mortgagesforbusiness.co.uk.